So tonight, we're going to dedicate this episode of the podcast to Gordon McFarlane, a lifelong bairn who sadly passed away over the weekend. One of the masterminds behind the original Back the Bairns campaign that saved the club. He was a bus convener of the Denny and Banknock Supporters Club. He was a club's media and programme editor for several years, but last, but by no means least, a family man who was simply Fockert daft. Gordon, this one's for you, mate. McAllister still going strongly in the closing minutes. Great one by Kevin McAllister! What a ball that is! Well, it is good, yes, Hagen! Kevin McGrath! He scored! It's Stokes on a hat trick! Goal number three for Anthony Stokes! Oh, Austin saw off Robinson and delivered! Sibbald scores! That's the goal! That's the moment! Samuel up and running again. Is it going to be the hat trick? You know it is. This is Falkirk Daft. Welcome along to Falkirk Daft, it's your unofficial podcast dedicated to everything to do with the one and only Falkirk FC. I am your host, John McAnally, and joined by a man so eager for Saturday to come, he started his own Dunfermline at Home advent calendar. It is Ross Wayne. That's a cracking idea. I should do that, shouldn't I? I know. What would be behind the doors, though? What would be behind um, the doors? Results from previous pumpings, I think. Yes, absolutely. Just little pictures of, yes. like, you know, Scott Arfield going, get it right up again, Tony Stokes doing the keepy-uppies and the, oh, that's yeah. It. That's it. Tam Scobie looking at the sky, that kind of oh, thing. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Let's, let's, do you know what? Let's start a Falkirk Daft Dunfermline advent calendar. We can do it for the next home game, the countdown yeah. to the days. Like, um, that. like that. It's a good market idea, Ross. It is a good marketing idea, and I think I think people will be up for that, wouldn't they? Because it just gives you a wee nice wee boost that morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And you'll hear that we've got, unlike last week where we started off the podcast a bit drumming, doom and gloom, we've got, a, you know, some lift in our voices, there some is, smile there. There's, there's, this, there's a smile, there's a, there's a bit of a bounce, and um, yeah, I think it's going to be a big week, um, obviously tinged with sadness in terms of the the, the passing of Gordon over the weekend, but do you know, I know, I know how he felt about this club. I know how he felt about the, this game. Yeah, his family know only too well as well. So if there's one game where Falkirk could be doing like a magnificent win, let's do it on Saturday. I'm pretty sure the club will mark it on Saturday as well. Um, yeah, I think there's going to be a minute's applause. I think I've read uh, before the game, which is which is which is a real nice touch. And, That's really nice. Uh, yeah, I yeah. mean. Such a servant to the club, such a supporter of the club. Um, it's only right that we, we applaud uh, the work and, and everything that Gordon done for, for Falkirk. Um, so yeah, tinge of sadness, but smells on our face because of the result at the weekend. Um, we're recording tonight on Halloween. Um, Ross, I've got a question for you. What player would you dress up as if you were to go as a Falkirk player for Halloween? Oh, I'd have to be racy, wouldn't it? Oh, is this like Falkirk with a ginger hair? Time? Falkirk player of all time, right? Okay. Yeah, you just have to go as um, racy, wouldn't you? You know, get yeah, the probably. He's a tall, he's a home Hummel, Hummel strap, yeah, yeah, exactly. Get my try and do some sort of side partner if I can with my hair, uh, and then take it from there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, 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 you? I, do you know what I think? Um, I'm just slightly tall, so I think I drink, dress up as big Kevin James and wear like a really small shirt, like really tight on me, like he did in the '97 Cup uh, final when he yeah. tried to whip it off, you know. And the, the, the long sleeves always seem to just go halfway up his arm as well, didn't they? I, I so big Kev. I'm gonna go like, shave my head. Big Kev, here we go, big Kev. Well, you've also got a bit of a resemblance for Jonas. Do you remember oh. Greg Shaw? <laughs> Greg Shaw? got a small resemblance for Greg Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, who have you come as? I've come as Falkirk midfielder Greg Shaw. Do you remember him? The and then they go, list. no, I don't, I'm going to have to Google. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. You look... <laughs> um, I know. Uh, um, do you know what? On, um, but before we get into it, before we get into it, I've, I've put out on Twitter about Halloween based Falkirk players. We've got some big news for the show, haven't we, Ross? We do, we do. There's um, breaking news has came out this evening to um, supporters, su supporter society uh, members, John. Yeah, and um, what is happening? 
So there's quite a lot going on. So um, if we just pick out some of the... Um... By the way, that wasn't the big news I was talking about. Oh. But you, let's continue with the Focus Support Society, then we'll come to our big news. Ah, our big news, sorry. Yes! yes. No, continue with the Vulcan Support Society because this is right. break. This is breaking news. So this is like Sky Sports Center. Like we've got, we're like Jess right, Stelly in here. Yeah, we've here just we go. got some break. Can we go to it? No, we can't. Can we go to the, the Focus Support Society news? Yes, we can. Yes, Ross we can. Wayne. Yes, we can. Right there we go. So we'll kick off with the Support Society big news. It's just broken, and then we'll come to our even bigger news, John. Um, so uh, a couple of things that have just came out from the latest Support Society email, which has just landed. Um, to say they are delighted that John Wright has accepted Falkirk Supporter Society's nomination as a director of Falkirk Football Club, having been the sole candidate in the recent election. So John replaces Doug Moody um, and will sit alongside existing fans director Nigel Serafini, championing fans' interest in the boardroom and working with the board to rebuild our club. John had said, I believe passionately in wider fan participation that the FSS is striving for. Falkirk fans have a window of opportunity to turn our club around and are succeeding. I am acutely aware of the challenges our club faces and want to play my part as a director to ensure Falkirk Football Club not only survives, but also thrives. And it goes on to say, a lifelong bairn born and raised in the shadow of Brockville, John had a successful career in the public and private sectors, including local government, oil industry, the NHS, and ran his own IT consultancy before retiring recently. John's also been volunteering at the club, helping the commercial team, reviewing IT, and generating ideas to increase income. And as it finishes, FSS members will get the chance to meet John and Nigel at an event very soon. Well, listen, well done to John. I mean, a bit less, you know, he's retired, so he's going to have the time, you know, to put in. I think that, you know, you read the first line, you went unopposed, you know, um, which is a shame because you want, I guess, you want a contest, don't you? You, you want, but in, in ways, you know, I think people were maybe slightly put off by the amount of hours that you're going to have to put in to do that. And we all want, want, want sort of what's best for the club at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I, th I think you know, John. It's uh, it's yeah. You're probably right. It would have been nice to maybe have maybe one other person going for it. However, if it's one person and the one person's got the time, the passion, the energy to do it, exactly, then it gets my vote. Absolutely, absolutely. So best of luck to John um, on the board and hopefully you can make FSS um, feelings known at that level. Um, and there was, there's more FSS news, is that right? There is. Uh, just before we come to our own special news, yeah, so um, people will have seen this on our socials um, previously. However, um, there's obviously... Uh, their their draw, which we're going to do on the um the podcast this evening. So this is the first of the Support Society monthly draws. Um, first prize, as we know, is hospitality for two uh in the boardroom, kindly donated by the club. Um, second prize, and I would say the better prize is a bucket <laughs> of beer donated by ourselves uh here at Falkirk Daft, uh, which I do have. The bucket to hand, actually. So I'm Oh, there you off. go. Beautiful. Yeah, we need to drop that off at the uh, top. Just, just checking the budget, Ross, here for the, the beer. You're seeing a bucket of beer. That looks like an awful big bu uh, bucket there. Yeah, we're going to fill it halfway, though. So it's fine. Right, good. Good. Just <laughs> checking. Yeah, Budgets budget don't stretch that back. far in Falkirk yeah. Daft, you know? Plus, there is only so much beer they can drink before a game. This is true. That's true. Um, uh, the, the, the guest prize, and there's two guest prizes, which is great. Um, afternoon tea. For two worth £85 on a tour of either Glasgow or Edinburgh on board a vintage Routemaster bus. Now, that's supplied by uh, the Red Bus Bistro, um, which is brilliant of them. And last but not least, uh, quite a remarkable late addition um, from a very generous fan uh, and member of the Sports Society who's donated two tickets for the evening with Simon Stainwood, which is taking place this Saturday night. Um, after the the derby game, so absolutely brilliant. Um, so that's do fab. Know, do you know what Ross? Um, I think it's great, and we, we the deadline was today to join the FSS to to get into this draw. I think you know we're, we're it looks good. It looks like we've, there's less than just six, we're shy of six hundred. I think now, uh, for, which yeah, is five ninety, uh, yep. which is great boost in the last month or so. Do you know what? And we're going to do what we call in the radio business a tease. So. 
If you stay to the end of the show, we'll do the draw at the end of the show to find out if you're getting one of the, one of those great prizes, the hospitality, the beer bucket, um, the trip on the Red Bus Bistro, or those tickets for the Simon Stay and Rod evening. Um, we'll do the draw at the end of this Perfect. week's show, okay? Um, other things going on, I put this out today um, on our Twitter, as it's Halloween, I thought, let's have a bit of fun and look for some spooky bairns. Um, so we've had a few come in, Ross. Uh... Jim has got Pump Ken Edie. I like it. I do like that one. Yeah. Simon, uh, David's got Simon Slainrod. Oh, Sabatino, yeah. Sabatino Damas Murderer. <laughs> That's quite good. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, awesome. For any younger bear, Sabatino Damas is Falkert's first foreign signing. Never played a game. Oh, um, uh, six think. minutes or something like that. He played it? six minutes off the bench, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Demon Bannon, that's a bit tenuous. I'm going to give, say, David. Or how about just Leo Fassan? Yep, that's scary enough. Um, why, Bairn? That, that gives me the fear, that one. Yeah. Yep. Why, yep. Bairn says, Farid El Al Bui. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one as well. Good. Good. Uh, yeah. For those uh, with long memories, Tom says, Kenny Ashwood, nightmares guaranteed every Saturday night. Um, <laughs> And Tyler uh, jumping on our ba bandwagon, Joe uh, Ross, and saying, "Here's Johnny Joy." Oh, um, that's a belter. Fair that's play. Good. Fair well play. done. And John goes, "Bill Taylor, Eddie Slay, or Boo, be a legendic." <laughs> and, and Millsy finishes off with a joke. Do you want to hear this one? Just you can maybe when you're out guys in tonight, Ross. You can maybe use this one. You ready for this? Right, go on then. What do Fifers do at Halloween? I don't know what do Fifers at Halloween. Pump Ken. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> no one Malik I'd end up uh, chapping a actual Fifers door who just lives locally. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ross, forget Halloween nonsense. We've got big news here on Falkirk Daft. This is uh, going to be an extra podcast, and you are going to tell us what we can expect this week, Ross Wayne. Yes, so our big news uh, here at Falkirk Daft is that we have secured a double signing, John. It's a double signing of the manager, John McGlynn, and assistant manager, Paul Smith. They're going to come on to a, a special episode of the podcast uh, to be recorded this week. And we're going to put it out on Thursday as a bit of a um, build up to, to Saturday's big game. And I am absolutely looking forward to speaking to the pair of them. I can't wait. No, I can't wait. You're going to, we're going to have that special episode going out um, on Thursday ahead of the game, as Ross said. Um, however, my worry slightly here, Ross, is we're just going to have to ask John McGlynn two questions in the full 45 minutes. It's going to be done, be done, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I know, I know. Um, um, do you know what? It'd be great if you get in touch. We'll put this out on our socials as well. We want to do some quick fire questions with them. So I'm thinking, you know, you know, who's the best player you've ever worked with? Who's the hardest trainer? That kind of thing. So, We'll we'll do the big questions, but if you could get in touch with those quick fire questions that you want from John and Paul, we'll put them to them on uh, the the special podcast this week ahead of the Dunfermline game. So get in touch with that. We'll put it up on our socials as well. But I'd love to hear from you on that. And I, I honestly, I'm I'm intrigued. I can't wait to speak to John again. I'm, I'm just there's so much I want to ask. So passionate him. about him, isn't he? He's so passionate. That's it. I, I want to find out, you know, why he came to Falkirk, what drew him to the club. I want to find out about his philosophy in, in football because I think it's, as a manager, he's really developed, yeah. you know, and really evolved as a manager. From when we see what he used to do, you know, to what he does now, I think I think there's some really interesting questions to be put to him, so I'm really looking forward to it. I think this is going to be brilliant, John, and obviously I'm nervous about it as well because obviously it's John McGlynn and I know we Lewis and Stuart talk to him every week, but this oh. is... Slightly different in the in the respects of obviously from our see if we see if we ask the wrong question and he goes at us oh no <laughs> oh no I don't want to dress him down off what John McGon I know I know obviously, I, as you know I spoke to him very briefly on uh, Friday did you shite it did you was, absolutely shite it I'm like a proper nervous oh, hi John hi but he answered the phone he went hi Ross and I went. Oh, this is, putting this you on is, the back foot that, straight away this is properly putting me on the back foot so uh, yeah so that'll be really good um, can't he wait to get that recorded this week I'm shiting it already I'm <laughs> shiting it already do you know what do you, do you, I'm going to have the boss to say why do you and Paul dress the same every, is it like a team thing <laughs> maybe, um, their, maybe their wives insist <laughs> Is it like not, Danny De Is it like Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger and twins? Yeah. You know, it's just... I don't think we can ask that. 
I'm, I'm, I'm going positive in. Why not? Why not? Um, brilliant. So, listen, John McGuinn, going to be on Falkirk Daft this week, so look out for that. Episodes dropping on Thursday ahead of the big Derby game. But we've got, like I say, we've got smiles on our voices. Uh, we've got, we're looking forward to this episode um, because we're coming off the back of a big W. Um, and we're going to look back right now at the Queen of the South game. And every week on Falkirk Daft, we like to invite a guest pundit and i can't believe it this has just been dropped on me i did so i got a, a message from from ross saying oh uh our pundits dropped out so i've asked dave and i was like dave who and he went dave your brother <sighs> so <laughs> it's a bit like the hogarth derby it's the mac and Alley derby i have to say though D- david in in fairness to david not only is my brother he's also head and he's been the, the, the absolute linchpin in the crunchy initiative uh, basically got the, the South Stand to change to the Kevin McAllister. Two years, three years of really hard work he's put into it, almost causing himself a divorce. I thought he was going to be back at my mum and dad's soon enough, but, you know, he sorted it out. Um, and, it's, you know what, really proud of the work he did there. And I'm sure every Falcon supporter, you know, because it looks brilliant. Um, so let's welcome my brother to the podcast. It is David McAnally. Hey, David. Yeah, not bad. Thanks for having us on. Uh, oh, just, a last minute sub. Yeah, uh, I was just saying to Ross, Dave. it's like, uh, Dave's coming on the podcast. Um, I was like, Dave who? It's like, Dave, your brother. I was like, oh, that's why I had a missed call from him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which he yeah. dinged, apparently, uh, George. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's middle... not unusual, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I was in the middle of a shopping, man, you know, and then I, get, I was like, I'll come back later. I'm a, I forgot to. Sorry, well, buddy. No, that's all right. I spoke to Gordon, actually, um, because <laughs> um, uh, Ross informed me who your guest was that pulled out. So um, uh, he's, coming I, 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 he's coming on next week. He's coming on next week. Yeah, well, I said I think I'm going to set a suitably uh, low bar for him. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then it reminded me that Scott Steele had the guitar and and that out. Uh, this is really, very, uh, like Scott. Uh, Scott yeah. last week up the game. Have you got any musical? T- I know you haven't got any musical um, talents, David. But well, have you got, got something you can do to us? It's like Britain's Got Talent. It's like Falkirk's Got Talent now. Can you perform something for us? It is Halloween. Have you got a joke, for example? Oh come on! Prepared <laughs> 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 better for that. I did no, notice I on did. the cut. The, you've you've all put some um, Halloween based bairns up on the Crunchy Initiative Twitter. Have you, can you can give us those? Yeah, if you want. I thought you would. Were you not reading them all out? I, I've anything? read. I've read out your first one. So we we were. I think this was from you, David Simon Slainrod, Farid El Hell yeah. Hallo uh, Gui, Sabatino de Mass Murderer, Demon Bannon, which was very poor, by the way, or Leo Fasan. Have you got any more? I was going to go for Demon Lewis, but then I thought, let's not mention his name. That's uh, yeah. That's actually a better. That's, that's a, better, a better pun, though. Aye, yeah, probably. Yeah, it is a better pun. Yeah, yeah. I know. But, it'll, it'll be. Uh, it'll be. It'll be tagging you on social media now, having a go at you, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that, you need to watch out for that. Eh? <laughs> no, I was going to use it, but then it would ruin the, the Leo for San ones because Den and Lewis is equally somebody that you don't even have to put a pun in his name to send shivers down the spine. Uh, what else you got then? Right, Come- all right, go on then. Well, I went. I went more contemporary. I went with this. Uh, the squad for uh, the current squad. So I've got Coffin Yates. Yes. Or Yates. And I was like, "Who are you going to call, Donaldson?" It's oh. <laughs> good. There, love it. Love it. It. Yeah. And um, there's a wee bit of a connection with the last two because there's uh, Leon Hannibal, the Mick Cannibal. It's a, a bit of a stretch, but then that's a big to- stretch there. <laughs> leads on to a, a bigger stretch of uh, Gary. I ate his Oliver with some fava beans and ice Chianti. <laughs> That's a big stretch there. That's a big stretch. Can I just say, we've actually had a few, uh, since we've went to started recording, we've had a few that have come in, so let's give a few mentions to some of these. Uh, we had uh, Johnny Flynn, Jimmy Gilmore, and Saul McGivern. I've come in for there, and I saw my favourite one, which came in. I'm just going to find it. We've got Anthony Spooks from Bony Unks Two Two Seven, and there's another one that came in from Wayne Fester. That came in from him as well. And <laughs> Dell, the best one yet, Witchy Cadet. Oh, Witchy like Cadet. Decent, Classic. decent. Anyway, um, David, before we get into the Queen of the South game, you have some big news from the Crunchy Initiative involving the game this weekend. Do you want to tell us what it is? Uh, yeah, sure. It's the, um, so we've been talking to 
Uh, I, I spoke to Jamie Swinney. I've been talking to Stuart Adam at the the Falkirk Supporters Society. So um, I've basically I've got the I bought the last twenty five remaining uh, programs for the uh, Kevin McAllister stand, and I was planning to sell them at some point. I got crunchy to sign them, uh, and I'm going to sell them and get the wee prints that we made, but get get them put in sort of um, a five size or something. Um, so with the money that with that I was planning to do something, I've obviously not sold them yet, but hopefully I will make a return on the money. Um, but what I decided to do was um, with the FSS, we're going to put um, 60 beers behind the bar at the Brockville Bar on Saturday. Um, they'll be available for um, anyone that's in the, the Falkirk Supporter Society. So if you want a free beer, you'll, you'll need to join by Friday. Um, and we'll give you details closer to the time about how you can claim the beer. Um, and it's it's an honour of uh, it'll be Crunchy's 60th birthday next week. So just for oh, wow. something to do. And, uh, maybe just a wee bit of the build up to the match, get folk a few beers and and hopefully get a wee bit of a buzz about the place. I, I'm sure it won't need much more. But um, and, and also, if it, I think Jamie said the bar opens at 12. So it's going to be a first come, first serve basis. Um, is it one per customer? Like nine minutes past twelve, then. Will it? <laughs> well, has, yeah, I, I think I think it will be one per customer. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. No um, worries. But, so, but the sooner you get in there, the, the, the bigger chance you've got of getting one because once the six they're going, they're going. So it's a great and idea. Dude, early, and hopefully, if it, more people in earlier and, and and more business to the club, so and really, really, really good idea. idea. Yeah, so sixty-three pints behind the bar at the Brockville Bar. In the south stand from 12 o'clock if you're an fss member get there you'll get cd uh, details on how to claim your free pint but get down to the brockville bar on saturday before the game and get yourself a free pint courtesy of the country initiative and uh, david really hopes he can sell these programs otherwise he's going to be way out of pocket know, on this. <laughs> you know christmas know. is coming up though david so that's a great uh, christmas present as well no, just um, i've got the time to get it sold but uh but i'll say as well i, I don't know if it's a pint it's beers but I'm, i've not qualified for it's a pint or, or bottles so right okay um, don't, don't, way, don't be way. um it doesn't matter yeah, david I, it's free beer that's all that matters that's it, exactly. um like uh, we mentioned the, the crunch initiative you briefly there um you worked on this project two and a half years going on three years to get this the the stand um named after crunchy and i mean i have to say david and me and ross were talking about it it looks exceptional it looks brilliant so hats off to you um i mean how hard was it getting getting it over the line and getting it done yeah i mean it was it was difficult i mean i don't want to bore into too much this is one thing i was on the uh the Falkirk podcast and I was always a bit of trepidation coming on here because I, I thought it was the death knell of the uh, the Falkirk podcast. <laughs> luckily they done, luckily they done another episode after my one, so I think it, it was a good cure for insomnia. But uh, mm-hmm. no, nah, I mean it was it was it was a bit of a graft. Um, well, Ross will know as well. Um, we sort of we started to you know the plan was always to do it and make sure it was done correctly and, and make it look nice like we did and have like a friendly and and, and just do it the best way possible and um, and it's when we started uh i think we, we first sort of convened in, in january or something and not long after that St. Mirren named the stand after tony fitzpatrick and i mean he's a big legend you know i, I work at St. Mirren and uh you know, I have well. I'm sure everyone does have respect for sort of other club legends and stuff, um, and clearly he's massive to some Madden fans. But I mean, they, they named a stand. I don't think I was there not so long ago, and I was having a look. I don't think there's any signage. Um, they had a plaque which I couldn't even see, and I think the plaque was near a toilet somewhere, and it was just this really like crappy wee thing. I think they had like six people there to honour them, and it was sort of done as a surprise, and they. They had this wee tartan scarf or uh, blanket thing over it, and it, it was like immediately when that happened, we were like, "Like that's that's kind of exactly what we don't want to do." Um, so yeah, it was just the, the hardest part of the start was trying to convince Crunchy to do it. That was um, one of the toughest things because he wasn't. He, he's quite, you know, he's he's not a fan of the limelight. I don't think. Uh, no. And and it, but it, I think he just talked to his family and it, you know said how much an honour to be and I mean one of the things he said to me is like he spoke to he was getting slagged off his workmates when he sort of suggested that um, the idea had been floated to him and they were all like oh what are you, are you dead yet you know because none of these things are done post uh, 
humorously, uh, but I was like that. Well, exactly. You don't want to, uh, you know, kick the bucket, and uh, you want to have the chance to see it, you know, and, and uh, have fans honour you. So, now nah, it was. A, I think it, uh, that's the biggest thing. It was long overdue, and and it should be great for him to go by and and particularly his family and that as well to see it. So. Yeah, and it was a great occasion, obviously, with the friendly against Kilmarnock and to open <laughs> the stand. And I mean, it does, you know, the whole thing looks great, David. So well done to you. Well done to everyone on the Crunchy Initiative for making that happen because it, it, that those things make a big difference to the club. It makes our club look bigger, you know, having that sort of thing. So well done, David. Uh, I know you went through a lot of hard work and almost a divorce to get it. So well done. <laughs> yeah, aye. Uh, we shall not name Kevin McCallister in the house for a little while. Yes, yes. Uh, Until I quite like a program for a Christmas. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, imagine <laughs> that. that. I quite like my sister-in-law, so don't do that, David. Don't do that. No, right. uh, Marie did get to meet him at the, the game. She's like, she right, did. Yeah. <laughs> I, I met you at long last. Heard your name so often. So um, no, nah, it was good. Um, and let's say it was, it was a good night. So the main thing as well with the whole night was that he enjoyed it. So we had a, a whole bunch of ex players and that there, um, which it, uh, I'm not even sure exactly who turned up, but I had a list of, of them all that, that were there and some good cracking names. I saw Marino Keith. Marino I saw Keith, Marino yeah. Keith was there, which was I don't amazing. think I recognised him though, because I think he's, but, yeah. uh, is he no one a sort of bit. He's went uh, total bot eyes, total shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, oh. I saw him. I think it was him and Paul Mathers walking up the stairs, and I recognise yeah. Paul because I see him, uh, you know, at St. Johnson games and stuff. But I sort of said hello, and then uh, it wasn't until after I went away, and I think you said, and I realised that's who it was, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I, a uh, cracking player, him, and I, right. a few big legends. Uh, but no, no, it was so, great, was great good. night. Well done, well done. Um, listen, uh, let's. I know your Bairn story, but the listeners won't know what your Bairn mm-hmm. story is. What? How did you get into Falkirk? What was your kind of? Oh, well, I think it, I think it was you. <laughs> it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, because yeah, I think um, you, you started going. I don't know who was it, Bloy or whatever. You you started going to games, mate. I can't remember. Yeah, I started going to my mates. Harry uh, and so you started yeah. going. I was. I, I don't know. I would have been eleven or whatever, and you. I think you then got a season ticket. Uh, and we're talking about. And I think I went. I, I I can't actually remember the first games I went to. I think I might have got into Jeffrey's a couple of games under Jeffrey's. Uh, it was kind of Lambie that I started. <laughs> a bit more regular, a terrible way to start. Which is, yeah, which is bizarre. I've, I've gained the connection, but of course we had the sort of ninety six, ninety seven run, and that and Crunchy came back, and uh, that kind of got me hooked. But I just I, I loved it. Like as a kid going there. Um, you know, just walking up doing Graham's Road or, or getting a bus into town with my mates and, and going there. And, you know, you kind of felt like a bit of an adult, even as a kid there. And you, you got to, you know, swear or whatever, like <laughs> singing the choir, going the choir section and uh, and just sort of be a part of it all. It's just a, like, it was just hooked on that, that whole thing, you know. I, I, always I, takes back, like, see when you go in, like the, see when things like the smell of mud kind of, Reminds me of Brockville and that. I know it was a yeah. bit of a, a shithole, really, but like it was, it was, it was special, you know. It? Yeah, yeah, it was special. Um, but I that, that was it. And I, I, after that, I kind of started going regularly. Um, I don't think I got my first season ticket till a bit later on, though. Um, I used to just pay at the gate most times, and mm. then because uh, I think I think I still played rugby at that time on Saturdays and stuff, so I, I couldn't go to every game. Um, and then just yeah, went on from there. But unfortunately, obviously, the work that you know, uh, I sort of work a lot of Saturdays, so I can't go as often as I yeah. Think. I mean, that, I mean, David. Uh, David says his work. He is a cameraman for all Sky Sports. And he's actually off to film the World Cup, the third World Cup. He's filmed. So he's off to Qatar uh, in a couple of weeks' time to film that. He's yeah. been to Brazil, he's been to Russia, you know, it's uh, all right for some. So you, unfortunately, you, obviously, as a result of your work, yeah, you, you miss quite a lot of Falkirk games. Um, but you will have a favourite player, and you're not allowed to say Ken McAllister, um, so, or Simon Stainrod, or um, Russell Lappy. So out with of those three, who's your favourite player? Uh, well, I was thinking about that because I, I was wondering if you're going to ask me that question, if it's just too obvious an answer as, as who it would be. But um, uh, uh, to me, one that's not actually been mentioned yet, and I was lucky to be walking alongside him the other night there at Pollock, is uh, Darren Barr. Oh, um, I, I, He was just <clears throat> a great player. Just He gave his heart and soul, great tackler, 
kind of guy that could just pull the, the team together. Um, but yeah, I was a massive fan of Darren Barr. And I think it was kind of exemplified uh, his last year when he he'd sort of signed the pre-contract. And normally there's always a bit of like, you know, fans kind of, anytime they have a bad game or anything like that and, and start to question um, their loyalty, you know. And I don't think you ever got that with Darren Barr. I don't think it's one. And it wasn't an easy season. I think that was, was it, was his last season when we, we stayed up, I think. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Before we went out. Yeah, yeah um, but I mean, he you couldn't question his uh, loyalty to the club and his work rate. You know, he, he just, despite the team struggling a bit, um, he always gave his all. And it, um, I, he was a great player. I, I love Darren Barry. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you were work, working alongside um, Big Sexy as well. It was Big Sexy, Lee Miller, and Darren Barr on the same panel, wasn't uh, it? I know it's not often you get to um, Falkirk. Legends uh, that are uh, in amongst it. the work. It's normally uh, like ex Celtic or Rangers players. So I made a change. I mean, Neil McCann used to. I mean, if, if, you know, Neil McCann, great player. I wouldn't necessarily become a Falkirk legend, but he did well for us. But he always used to get a good bit of chat and we'd talk about Falkirk. Uh, but I didn't. I didn't get speaking to Lee Muller. He was up in the commentary, so uh-huh. I didn't get chatting. Him, but... You probably just got to gaze at him from a distance. That's yeah, yeah. longingly. Ah, Lee. Well, the other guy we have uh, recently who's appeared as a uh, is Peter Grant has um, started doing a little bit of work. Oh, has uh, he? This guy. So I've not. I've not had a chance to talk to him. Peter Grant Junior, not Peter Grant Senior. Just double checking yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, look out for Peter Grant being a cameraman soon enough. Then well, um, I don't know if he's. He's not in the camera section. Is he not in the camera yet? Right? Okay. No, 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 no. Take really ages, just really slow and turning the camera, just like he does when he defends. Right, let's get into the match then at the weekend. Uh, I missed that mm-hmm. hands up. Um, Ross, you were able to catch it. David, you seen the highlights? Yeah, yeah, I, I saw the highlights of the game. Yeah, so yeah. Ross, talk us, talk us through us then. Comfortable. I thought it was brilliant. I thought we played really, really well in the most. Um, really, really chuffed with the three points. Tough place to go. Although I nearly got the result, the right result. I yeah. uh, on last week's podcast, I think I said quite confidently it would be three nil. You and did three nil. I was particularly chuffed with, my, with myself. But um, yeah, I thought we played really, really well. Really well taking goals. Uh, the intensity was there, unlike the last sort of two games, like I know the Kelty game, that second half, we did kind of hammer them for a large chunk of that, but it was a real poor game, and the second half against Alawa was a bit iffy as well. Um, But in terms of this game, it was, yeah, if we could just, if we could recreate that for the rest of the season, we'll be absolutely fine. It just seems that every game we come, maybe obviously Kelty aside, but we just come out of the traps and Montrose aside as well, out those traps and bang it just I, I don't know what it is we get that blip we get a kick up the arse and then it's back to right 100 miles per hour at the start of the game you know first goal comes within five minutes um you know the break up field after the queen's mistake great cross from morrison burrow there who started the move got us in the end gets an end with a, with a header it was nice we slide real pass by uh burrow to to morrison down the wing really really nice cross in and Bulleted it in the back of the net, so um, absolutely brilliant start to the game. Just, uh, just simple, and that seems to be we seem to be good at that all season. It's just that transition from defence into attack and counter attack. It seems to be a real mark of our game that we're going to put in there, isn't it? Yeah, I would agree. I would say definitely, certainly say so. Dave, what, what was your thoughts from the from the the, the, the caught the highlights that you've seen so far? Yeah, no, I thought it was. It looked good, you know, some good uh, chances created, but it's obviously hard to see uh, to give a, a full account without seeing the whole game. But the, the one thing that, it, you know, the goal at the end was a bit sloppy to give away. And I think that's always the fear amongst the team. I think what, what I think was really good about that uh, the weekend was that it's like, it's really encouraging to know we can have a, a kind of different attacking lineup and, and be just as effective. Um, because I think that's always like I think if you can find a solid back four and I, well particularly the centre halves who seem uh, Donaldson and Henderson seem to have a good partnership there, um, then your worries about getting the goals and I, I just yeah seeing Kai Kennedy getting in the action um, and Morrison Burrell getting another couple of goals 
it's just great to to see that we can go down a, a difficult place to um, to go and get three points quite often. Um, so that was that was one thing that's pleasing. Um, but the, the, I, again, what I always is you start off like in a, a, the, I think the last game I went to was the Allo game we used to, and it was thought it was going to be like a record scoreline, and 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 they seem to have this thing I think where they they feel comfortable in the game and they, they're maybe a wee bit lackluster when they're taking their chances. But the worry always is if you're only two goals up and they score a goal in the last sort of ten minutes, then collapse. then it, it changes the dynamic of the game. Yeah. So I think that's the one thing is maybe just to get a control in the game when we go up uh, a bit more and, and make the most of our chances. But no, I can't I can't complain. I mean the, the hardest thing to do is score goals and it seems like we're we're sort of we've got plenty amongst the team now, which is uh, good to have. Yeah, um, I mean, talking through, we we didn't talk about the changes that were obviously made. Uh, Allegria, Oliver, and McGuffey going outside. Not so surprising, McGuffey and Oliver, because Ross, it's probably something we've been asking for for a couple of weeks now. Mm. Surprised that Burrow came in for Allegria. Um, do you know I wasn't on Saturday? Um, I, I know we didn't really talk about that scenario happening. Um, but actually, when you think about it. One of uh, uh, John McLean's obviously looked like we said he would have yeah, done a tactical thing. thing. Yeah. yeah, he's done a tactical thing. He's looked at Queen's back, back four and or five, and thought, do you know what? The speed are, are going to cause them problems, and true enough, they did. They couldn't handle Ruman on Saturday. Um, the boy was phenomenal. Um, all over the place. Work rate was so so high. Um, people are obviously talking about Lawal. Um, no getting much game time. Um, you just wonder if the if the difference maker is that work rate that he's maybe got inside him in terms of Roman, because he's all over the place, absolutely all over the place, and he obviously took his two goals well, two difficult ones as well. One was a fast paced cross, the other one was a, a a deflected cross, but it hung up in the air quite a bit, and then he got a real good contact on it. So absolutely brilliant. Yeah, um, David, you talked about the kind of defensive frailties, and it's some. It, Call Liam Henderson, for example, when we almost gave away an equaliser, if it hadn't been for a good save from Nicky Hogarth. And then Cole Donaldson, probably at fault for the Queen of the South um, goal from Murray. Um, it, it seems that Liam's that Liam especially had a, some iffy moments recently. And, um, you know, Cole, I'd, I'd have to say that's probably the first mistake I've really seen Cole make. Would you change anything going into Saturday, guys? Would you Would you look at moving Brad McKay into centre half or bringing Sean Mack in? Well, sorry as well, Sean Mack. He wasn't on the bench. Apparently, it was a family bereavement. So, uh, best of wishes to Sean and the family. Hope that I hope it wasn't uh, a major one. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. Would you? I, change I, it? I, I personally, I wouldn't. I, I, no. I think I know. I think with Henderson sometimes it, it's weird because for the size of him, you'd think he wouldn't get bullied as uh, as he does sometimes. I think that was argument. I mean, argument certainly against Kelty, you yeah. had him a torrid, torrid time. I think it was was it the Dundee game as well. You know, just where there was a couple yeah, of games where he like, was yeah. kind of it was kind of getting bullied by the guys he really shouldn't be. You know, um, I'd say that's his worry, but no, I. I think generally, I, I would. I don't like to upset a centre half pair, and I think I think they've done okay. Um, if you if you're trying to protect them, maybe then you maybe think about setting somebody a wee bit further deep in front of them. But um, I I don't know. I I, I mean, we've seen Brad McKay at centre half as well, and and he's done a lot better this season. But would I want to take Henderson out and unsettle the the back four? Yeah. I don't, I don't think so. I think I would just keep the, the two together. I mean, I'm playing, playing devil's advocate, I think, because I don't think I, I would yeah, change yeah. it. I just, uh, Liam, Liam has, I mean, he had a couple of, sh- he's had a couple of shaky moments in the last couple of games. And I, I really like Liam Henderson. I think he, you know, there was certain games he's just been absolute lynch pit at the back and strolling forward like Virgil van Dyke with the ball. Um, Ross, it, it looked like Ness, but again, it was just pulling strings left, right and centre on that midfield on Saturday. Yeah, brilliant again. Um, I thought the midfield was fantastic on Saturday. Uh, Nesbitt was brilliant. Uh, <laughs> McGinn's passing was just so, so on point. Um, the, honestly, a couple of, two or three of the passes, you've probably seen them for the highlights as well. He was just like like a pin. Um, and Yeats was back in his normal um, position. I thought he did brilliantly as well. So no, I agree with Dave. I don't think I would make 
um, many changes, if any, for Saturday. Um, I know you mentioned you thought Cole was at fault for their goal. I, 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 I had to watch it back to see what was going on there. And Mackay doesn't follow the runner, which for me was a big part in the goal. So I don't know. You could argue maybe the, the two of them were at fault there. But yeah, I think Mackay, I, I, and he was good. I'm not going to lie to you, but um, I thought that, <clears throat> I thought his sort of, he fell asleep at that point, and that's why they scored. It kind of put the rest of the defence into a bit of a into a bit of a position. But no, I agree with Dave. I don't think I would make any changes for this one. Um, I think that's probably the attack, the attack and tight team we need to go with at home as well. Too often we're, we're and I know it sounds daft because we've we've scored a lot of early goals recently. But um, a lot of people talk about oh, it's just one up front. But actually, see if we can just hit them. And early on, I think Dunfermline will maybe crumble on Saturday if we score an early goal or two. Yeah, um, Kai Kennedy comes in for his first start. Um, looked very lively. Good feet uh, for the goal. Great finish across the keeper. Um, what did you make of his performance, Ross? Tidy, tidy. Again, I think he's been he's been waiting for a chance to start. And I thought he did really, really well. And again, I would keep him in there for... Um, sorry, he's he's ex Dunfermline as well, isn't he? Yeah, he play with him at some point. So uh, hopefully he's got a wee grudge there, and because um, I think their only current player who is ex Burns was it Tod- Todorov, Kevin O'Hara. As well. Is Kevin O'Hara playing though? Is he? I've not seen his I name. I think he's maybe he's maybe injured at the moment. All right, okay. Um, so on that base, well, obviously Mehmet's the keeper, and you've got Todorov there. But actually, the pair of them were treated really, really well at Falkirk, and um, and it was fairly successful to an extent for the two of them so um on that basis i don't know if they'll have too much of an axe to grind but i'd love uh i'd love we kennedy to kind of go and attack that fullback whoever they put up against them and uh show what he can do no absolutely um points off though kai kennedy wearing gloves I mean, we'll come on. Short short, why wear short sleeve? Why that. wear a short sleeve top and gloves? Right? Do you know what I mean? That's just pointless. You wear a long sleeve top and gloves. Fair enough. And you know, come on, Kai. You're brought up in Scotland, son. This is, this is the thing I was actually wondering. Do you still get long sleeve tops? Because see, when we were we were looking to back to we got the the shirts framed in the Brockville bar, and when we we're looking for pictures to associate the one with Crunchy wearing the actual top that that we got framed. Um, but a lot of them were, a lot of the pictures had the long sleeve version. And when you look back then, there was a lot of players would alternate between the long sleeve and the short sleeve. But I, I can't remember. I used to love a long sleeve top as well, but I'm going to show you. Oh, do you know what, Spicky, you say that. I've got much. one behind me, Dave. That's, oh, yeah. that's, <laughs> a, that's a player shirt for about, uh, what's that, maybe 12, 13 years ago. And you're right, though. It, it was maybe just after that season Folk yeah. stopped wearing them, and do you know why? It was the emergent. Remember the under, well, the Under Armour, the Under Armour. Yeah, was, yeah. Well, yeah the Under Armour's been a brand for a while, but that was this. I think roughly about that time is when players always just wore that, and the the club obviously thought, well, we're paying extra for because you do it, it does cost more for a long sleeve shirt, obviously. So <laughs> they obviously thought, well, well, kind of. There's no point paying for that if they're not wanting to wear them. So that I think that's kind of where that's went. Aye. Uh, that's well, a, there that's you, a there you go. Item there you've got then, Ross. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but still, the point stands: short yeah, oh, sleeves no, and, agree, and gloves. I, I, Come I, on, Nukai. No, as well, it's it's been. Uh, I was working at um, Murrayfield on Saturday, and it, it's really mild at the minute. So it's not even like even uh, agreeing the December months months and something as well. We still don't like to see the gloves on, but um, at the minute, it's like. Still pretty, pretty mild, you know. It's certainly no glove weather. So no. listen, I'll take it from Big Juan. He's from South America. He comes from the Colombia. You know, he's used to the beaches and the sun and all that sort of stuff. He can wear gloves all he wants because it's a, you know, it's a terrible climate to come into this. This fifteen degrees is like his winter. Do you know what I mean? So Juan, acceptable for gloves. Kai Kerry, I'm not having it. It's all right. I mean, gloves are all right in the in the winter, but um, as long as they don't wear the leggings, I'm 100 percent against oh, that. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's that's just yeah. wrong. See the thing. <laughs> see the thing is, this time last week, were we not talking about 
the impact of uh, mothers and wives in Scottish football. Maybe it's his mum. Maybe his mum said, no mind and wear your gloves. You wrap up, son. (laughs) (laughs) It's cold outside. You're going to play that football in that cold. Do you make your catch a death of cold if you don't put your gloves on? (laughs) Um, so <laughs> maybe that is um, listen I think we I think you know you've looked at the last couple of games Aloha there's another example just start games and we just need to keep going we just need I think they need to scuff because it's great they're playing great football great in transitions great on the break it's just I think we need that little bit more relentless you know attitude and I think once we find that, and if we do find that, I'm sure John McGlynn is absolutely trying to install that into the players. But I think once we find that relentlessness, we are going to wipe this fucking league. Come on, oh, come on. I believe it. Honestly, I believe it. I'm getting that's excited. I've been looking at your Dunfermline advent calendar, Ross. Um, <laughs> uh, right, listen, I mean, you know, the stats say it all, 53%. But actually, we for once, we were we were short in possession. It was the Queen's had most of possession, 53% to them. But they gained 12 shots in goal, 7 on target. Come on. We, we're just we're just waiting to pump a team five or six now, and I hope oh, it happens on Saturday. Saturday. Oh, 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 oh! I'm getting excited. On I was now. just saying Friday actually as well as uh, I think the 16 years ago since uh, Stokes scored the hat trick. At, at Is Park. it really uh, good? Good fat. I mean, yep. Yeah. Good yeah. Fat, yeah. It just could. We would love something like that again. You know. Absolutely. But, uh, uh, it's uh, <laughs> the Will thing you is that you're, you're Saturday night, right, maybe. Yeah, your Saturday night could be made or broken based on on the afternoon. You know, Simon no, Stainrod it's... could be <laughs> could be an empty uh, you know uh, audience for a. <laughs> no, no one's going to make it long to the Stainrod well. night if we were to, to have an absolute result. I Absolutely, know. fingers crossed. Um, will we hear from the manager? Yeah, John, a really professional performance today. A great start to the first half as well. I think it was a great performance, you know, a great away performance, yeah. A fantastic start, quite the opposite of last week, you know, and more like the way that we normally start games, you know, on fire. Great move, which Roman is involved in when he plays the ball into Callum and he gets himself in the box, and it's a great ball fired across the face of the goal, and Roman's done really, really well to get on the end there and a bullet header, no chance for the goalkeeper. And uh, we were we were playing well, you know, we were playing well. Uh, again, another in transition, very quick break, which we, we, we were, you know, were renowned for. And, uh, you know, Roman and Calm involved in it. The balls kind of like floated up in the air. Roman's obviously followed it in the air and uh, got a really, really good good header on it to get us 2 0 up. And I thought we totally dominated the, the first half. Uh, there was a, a little bit of breeze here today going down towards that, that goal. Uh, which might have had a, a little bit to do with the way the second half went as well. But totally delighted with the response for the players. Second half, you know, we get the dream start by getting the, the third goal. Kai, really delighted. His first start for the for the club and uh, and getting on the score sheet as well. Uh, good tricky feet and a good, a good strike to, to score from that angle. So we're delighted. Uh, obviously, Queens have came into the game and put us pushed us back a little bit and we're having to defend and we got cut out on one of the occasions and they've managed to, to score in that to be fair they were, they were in the game at that point in time and if we had been a little bit weaker maybe they could have got more but I thought we were very strong I thought we responded well to losing that goal uh, and the threat didn't really materialise that much for me I thought we we seen the game out very very well uh, we probably turned the ball over a little bit too much in the second half, which allowed him to come at us. But I felt, you know, we dealt with, 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 nearly, with nearly everything. And uh, delighted for the players, absolutely delighted for the players, delighted for the fans that have travelled down here today and backed us in numbers. You know, thanks very much for, for coming and your support is uh, much appreciated. You know, long, long journey and we do appreciate that. So uh, the players for responding, you know, a few questions asked after last week and they've delivered the goods today sets us up very nicely for the, the game next week so congratulations to every, every single player I thought every, every one of them uh, put a real shift in today the effort the desire the application and we're going to have to do that every week you know and we, we can't afford to to drop off that kind of like um, you know intensity and tempo in our game so only two minutes 48 from john this week on mcglynn watch um but yeah i, I mean he said it all really didn't he um I th- Talking about the transitions, the quick 
breaks, answering questions that remained from the Kelty game, you know, which was the important thing. It was it was obviously? I mean, I'd love to be a fly in the wall in training on the the Monday after the Kelty game because it, it it was a again Ross. Would you say was it a night and day performance or was it just? Uh, kind of yeah, up it, from was, the well, off. it was night and day, um, both in terms of football played and attitude. So I think you're right. I think he's probably absolutely went through them um, yeah. quite rightly as well because it was unacceptable. If we want to get out of this league and then greatest respects to, to Kelly, um, we need to be winning against them uh, amongst most of the teams. So, um, yeah, no, he did, he's obviously looked at it back. We knew it. We knew he would. He'd probably watch it four or five times, knowing John and Paul. And um, he, he's identified uh, weaknesses in Queen of the South, and and we've exploited it. And I'm sure he'll be doing a, the same again this week uh, before we play that lot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's get the views from the supporters. Peter kicks us off with saying, great result, shows the importance of starting well, boiling away in the first half, no exaggeration to say we could have scored four or five by half time. Third goal important, uh, then we sat off a little, no doubt to go to Palmerston and win comfortably is really impressive. Happy fan indeed. C-O-Y-B, that's right. from Peter. Good stuff. Um, Falkirk FC News, always difficult away tie. Blew them away. Squad looking great. Roll on Saturday against that team from across the water. Yeah. And Dave says, job done. Brilliant three points on the road. If we started every game like we did today, it would be a nightmare for any team in Scotland. Never mind this league. I mean, it's just, he felt sorry. Roman had a couple of chances for his hat trick. That shot from 18 yards, there was a ball kind of flashed across the goal. Um, you know, you just you want to see him get his hat trick because... I don't know if you heard the, the interview with Roman as well. He's a very confident boy. As we heard from his Edinburgh City <laughs> interview as well. I love that, though. Love that. No, it's great. Uh, 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 yeah, he, he didn't quite live up to that in a few games after. I was quite, but, um, I was quite disappointed that he didn't come out. But no, I, I, even when he's not scoring, he's causing issues. You know, I, I just love the one thing I think about a team. We've got so much pace throughout it, and, and that yeah. causes all kinds of issues. And, and oh. Roman is he's, he's absolutely lightning. Um, but not that you could see there's a player in him as well, you know. Just the the, the way he was sort of that that goal he scored at the weekend with, with him and Morrison linking up was tremendous, you know. And just um, and the way he took those goals um, against Edinburgh City as well, just running off the back. If he can get fun, someone to find those runs, then I'm sure he can score a lot more. Um, because you get they're almost indefensible runs then, because then you get they have to push further back to not allow the space in, but then it can come forward and, uh, you know, get the ball there. Um, he's obviously no bother with having the ball at his feet either. No, um, it's, just, it's having the players that, that know to, to pick out his runs uh, is a big thing. And that's one thing I always, when the short time we've seen Pierce Carroll, I mean, I'd love to see him more given the sort of 10 minute cameo or whatever he's, he's accounted for. Um, I know he's a young lad, but, I mean, he's just firing balls right over the top, aren't he? So, Not passing them, hasn't he? he yeah, has. yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. But the other good thing I was going to say about Saturday is just finding, allowing Yates to get back into midfield. And I wondered if that was the whole thing about Brad Mackay. You know, he's not a he's not a right back in the mould of, of Williamson or, or anybody else. I mean, Yates wasn't really a proper right back either, but he'd done a job. But he's, he's clearly a midfielder, and I think what that allows is um, he has the legs and it allows McGinn to sort of sit back through his game and, and, and let Yates do a lot of the work around him. What, yeah. what, what a difference it was having him back. Yeah. Totally agree. Totally agree. Definitely. Um, Pete says, fantastic from start to finish. Also, great noise from the travelling Bairns as well. Yeah, Stuart's saying comfortable win, solid performance. Burrow and Kennedy standouts today. Um, Colin chips in with totally unpredictable, comfortably beat Alloa, get destroyed by Kelty, and we go on to beat Queen of the South. Can someone please explain? I don't know if we can. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we actually can. Yeah. Um, and Craig, Willie Gibson's best game for us. I Willie Gibson was at fault for the second one. He gave the ball away for the second one. I, heard, I actually heard his post-match interview, and fair enough, came out hands up saying, better team won today, we were rotten. Um, um, and then Craig goes on. Shame it took a decade or so to come. Willie Gibson always used to play really well against us, so good he had a bit of a nightmare on Saturday. Indeed, indeed. And uh, and Chiggs, uh, shout out to Chiggs for a potential new song for Ramarn. Yeah, Chiggs has come in with uh, we should start a song for Ramarn saying Ramar. Oh no, sorry, 
Roll out the bottle, roll out the bottle of ghosts, roll out the bottle. Or you could make a rum and the rum on the bottle doesn't work. So roll out the bottle, roll out the bottle of ghosts. I think we can Not start. Bad. You can start it on Saturday, Ross, and I'll follow. <laughs> as long as you do. As long as you do. <laughs> I look forward to hearing that in the, uh, in the highlights. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, right, Falkirk Daft rated player, Ross. I, from highlights, I can't really judge, so we'll leave this on you this week. <clears throat> Rumour and Burnham for me. Yeah, double two goals. Um, but two goals, but his overall work rate was fantastic as well. Can I give a fuck at Dafty then? Uh, and do you know I I will, but it's purely on the basis that it it could have cost us early doors. Henderson with that right. silly Aye. incident. Um, it could have been it could have been a game changer. Thankfully, it wasn't, and we kicked on. But it could have been. Tell you what, Henderson's picked, up, well. Henderson's picked up a few of these Dafty awards this season, by the way. I'm sorry, Liam. Um, I'm, you've got, you, I can't believe you've missed Kai Kennedy and his gloves. Yeah, but give, Kay, give, it, to, give it to Kai Kennedy and his gloves. Yeah, no. I know he scored, but it's unacceptable. Gloves and short sleeve shirts are unacceptable, in my opinion. <laughs> if you wear one, right, so I'm Falk at Dafty, I'm overruling here. Kai Kennedy and his gloves. There we go. Uh, David, thank you so much for being our guest pundit uh, this week. Um, remember, if you want a free pint this Friday, uh, Saturday, beer, beer. Free, sorry, a free yeah. beer, we free. don't know if it's a pint or a bottle yet, yeah. get yourself down to the Brockful Bar before the game's 12 to 4. Um, you can be able to, uh, if you're an FSS member, you can pick up a free beer, uh, courtesy of the Crunchy Initiative. So again, David, thank you so much for doing that. And don't worry, when those prints with the sign programmes do go on sale, we'll give them a good plug in the podcast so you yeah, can make the money so. back. Exactly. Exactly. I was going to, I don't know if you've got time, but... Um... If, if you're waiting on the next guest, but uh, I, I was, I did have a wee video that I was hoping you could analyse, because um, I was so impressed by you with your your low bar and all all that chat. You've, you know, you've my low that block, down. my low your block. Low block sorry. Yeah, <laughs> See, yeah, I yeah. can't even. I just set the low bar, but yeah, the low block uh, and all that. So I, I got a wee uh, clip just hastily edited together so that. Oh, I, this is great! You're great to do me here, aren't you? You're going well, to do I might, I, I might, might have, have these both. Um, oh, 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 no. But, right, okay. Yeah. As long right, as it's not from a night out. <laughs> <laughs> right, go on, David. Share share what you've got, because we're going to get done here either way, aren't right, we? Right, are you able to see this? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Talk us through that, Rob. Just in case you're listening, just in case you're listening to the the bit, the audio <laughs> yeah. version of this podcast, this there's a it's Falkirk versus Labra. It's Falkirk High versus Labra High. What year was this, Ross? Ah, uh, two thousand five or six, maybe. Two thousand five, two thousand and six, and back when we had grass and there was no yes. Kevin McAllister stand. Wow, pretty much. So yeah, Ross and me played in this game. I I led the Larbert High team. Ross <laughs> led the Falkirk High team. Uh, I think we beat you that day, Ross three two, I believe, on the Larbert High. Mm, on the Larbert. Yeah, but see, see if we're talking analysis. Look how, uh, look how good I am here at looking for the ball. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, good Here space. Go. Yeah. Play, play uh, the clip, David. Play the clip. Here we go. Here we go. Nice. Oh, get that ball through and turn. Oh, <laughs> the uh, yeah. Right. Great right. turn. The, the shot, maybe something to be desired. Yeah. <laughs> and there's Rod. Uh, and there's, oh, there's, there's, I'm in the yeah, goals, yeah, right? Uh, <laughs> John in goals. Oh, uh, Jesus. Do Please we have watch his kick out? Do we have his kick out here? Yeah, yeah, we do. Watch the <laughs> YouTube version for this horrible to be, <laughs> to be fair, like it's always one of these things and goals, and you see keepers uh, warming up all the time, smacking it over the, the halfway line. It looks they make it look so easy. But if you ever you know, you can take a shot from twenty yards and, and blast it way over, but whenever you hit a goal kick and try to put the power in it. It's, I'm, gla- uh, I'm glad you're covering me up here, David. I would great to see this. Please yeah, watch yeah. the YouTube no, version it, no, of the it was a, there were, It's not in the edit, but there was a later part where uh, I think Chris Todd, who is a very good footballer, doesn't doesn't do much better with the distance. <laughs> so, here we go. Here we go. Do you actually make it outside the box here? Uh, what do you do? You didn't just... Just yeah. made it. And I'm back in. I'm back in. Oh, oh, just past the post. <laughs> the, <laughs> Ross. Look at that, Ross. We were just, look I at that. Daft goalie's gift. Uh, goalie's gift, <laughs> aye, exactly. There's <laughs> the next one, yeah. Keeper. Is this, me, is this me involved? 
yeah, yeah. This is this is you running into the front post. I think. Yeah. Oh. So, so John's. Uh, I've just made a mess of uh, a save mess. there. Yeah. And uh, Ross oh, misses. Miss Ross misses from two yards. Oh God. Uh, good good oh. block on the line, but uh, I didn't expect the, the strike. I think has a hat trick here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Please tell me. Keep keep rolling this day. We'll talk. So here's another kick out from me. Out. Um, and it's this, fine. Is, this is a good uh, one here. Right. It's this when Ross <laughs> dives. No way. There it goes. <laughs> Shot by a sniper. I got Unfold, listen, the you know, official boy. SFA referee deemed that a, a foul. I can't believe it. I can't believe you got a foul let's, for that. Let's that's just, just let's watch uh, the stages Ross goes down and again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a foul. <laughs> I want to know. Right. Here's there's the vicious uh, kick to my knee, <laughs> and there I was down. Mere stages in the pavilion. Here are you, Jesus. To, to be fair, they always say you need to, you know, give the referee uh, an option. You know, <laughs> make him make his mind up. Exactly. He did that. He had to. He had yeah, to do yes. something. So he, he got the free kick, and uh, yeah, some would say harshly given. Right, just uh, mean the goals. John, oh, throw it in the net. Get it, get it there. Throw it in there. But here's the winning goal, I believe. Is, yeah. John, um, John let's just talk through the winning goal now, shall we? Goal. Let's talk yeah. through the winning goal. Play it, David. I want to talk okay, through the winning David. goal here. So it's Falkirk 3, Larbert High 3. Oh, there's John with a wee one two Off the head. What a finish. Sheepy, fantastic. Up the road. 4-3 to the Bairns uh, for Labrador High, so there we go. John, and there's we, the post-match we... interview with Ross <laughs> with a lot more hair. <laughs> John, are we actually are we trying to say that that was an assist by you on purpose? I believe there it. There's no way <laughs> the assist. you meant that. It literally hit off your face. It... <laughs> One, two. Listen, thank you for bringing that up, David. 4-3, Labrador High, up your Falkirk High. There we go. There you go. And that is... Uh, available somewhere, the full highlights available somewhere on YouTube. Yeah. Well, but do you know what? We'll post up the link on our Twitter. If you've listened to the audio version, we'll stick up the link on our Twitter so you can watch that terrible, terrible efforts from me and Ross. <laughs> David, thanks so much for being our guest pundit this week. Remember, if you want to be a guest pundit, uh, drop us a DM on Twitter, Facebook, or you can email us, falkirkdaftpod at gmail.com. This is Falkirk Daft. Every week on Falkirk Daft, we would like to look at the games ahead and it's the big one this Saturday. It is the Derby as we face those from across the water. Those from Mordor shall travel across the Kincardine and Forth Bridges and invade Hobbiton. I, I think I should have a better analogy than that. Anyway, from the That's Never 10 Yards podcast, it's Michael Woods representing Dunfermline. How you doing, Michael? Uh, I was doing well up to that introduction, um, but <laughs> out apart from that, very well, thank you for having me on. Nice I, to see you, Michael. Um, listen, um, are, are you like us, Michael? We were talking, we've been talking about it on the show, we're just like, we're just counting the days. We were thinking perhaps there is a, a market in a, a Dunfermline Falkirk kind of advent calendar where you open each uh, door and there's a fantastic Falkirk victory behind each door as you get uh, towards the game. Are you like that? Do you, do you get that kind of feeling running up to the game? Yeah, it's the first ones you look for on the calendar when they come out for the fixture list, isn't it? So yeah. I think you're always looking forward to it. And with Dunfermline this month, there's not many league games outside of yourselves, Clyde and Peterhead, who obviously I think we all see as like the minnows of this league just now. So with that, I think this is this is our month at the moment. So I, I think every Dunfermline fan has been looking forward to it, especially since... The last one came in, in between that period of uh, postponed fixtures because of the Queen's passing. So, yeah, I think every Dunfermline Falker game it seems a massive game, no matter the context of the occasion. No, absolutely. Um, you got a good view at Falkirk, obviously at the last game, and um, Michael. What did you make of, of Falkirk as a as a as a threat? Well, I mean, it's standard under McGlynn, like a great passing side, want to attack, be on the front foot. Um, so, I like. I don't. I won't go as far as say I enjoyed it, but I think what I liked was a team actually coming to attack them. Feeling uh, East End Park, a lot of teams have been quite aggressive in their ways, sitting deep, inviting them feeling onto them and trying to obviously break on the counter attack. But it's not worked for teams in that favour. So I just like to see a team go at them feeling because I think it's the way you can beat them feeling, but it's also the way that them feeling get most of the joy as well. So I think this is why these couple of games and the games going forward between us, uh, the rest of the way are going to be entertaining the affairs. As much as the meaty challenges will be flying in, of course, but the actual football and show will be entertaining as well. Yeah. Michael, I agree. I think there could be goals on Saturday. I genuinely do. 
Yeah, I was looking back on like the previous occasions. Not that necessarily has an impact on what is, but I think it's in, the, in the last 12 or so years in league anyway, we've both won eight games each, drawn four, and there's not many occasions where both teams have been held scoreless. So I think there will be, I know it'll be a high scoring affair, but I definitely think yeah. each team will get a goal at least. Yeah. How, how do you think you've been going under McPake this year, Michael? Um, I've, there's been some criticism I've seen of, of just the style of football and stuff, but I'm guessing, you know, the, the, the stats, I mean, you've only had one loss and that was that um, up at Lynx Park a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, you're, you're, you're four points ahead of us at the moment. What, what have you made of McPake's style in, in coming into the team? I think he's, he's settled the team down, obviously, the more defensively structured. Um, and considering he inherited a lot of these players and he's adding like obviously his own influence in terms of getting some of the young players into the squad as well I think what we lack is and the reason it's maybe not entertaining or simply and watch all the time is there is not much pace in the team and there's not many wide options so he's, he's stuck with like the with the Falkirk game and after the Kelly Hearts draw I think he went back to the three at the back um, and put Comrie and um, Josh Edwards as the wing backs and I think they provide the kind of width and that's where they really get a lot of the threat from but then, I, them and themselves are not fast players either, so they don't have like the trickery to go with it. I think the only kind of flair play we've got is mockery. So it's, it's really a, a team of like hard workers, industrious guys. Um, none of them are like feeling talent wise or ability wise, but they just don't have that kind of X factor about them. That kind of real spark that we've seen maybe the last time we had Elbak Tui, for example, who was lining up the leagues. So it's just a team of functional guys who, hopefully, as the league progresses far up, from my point of view, of course, not yours that this is a team that's enough to get us up to the championship once again. And then that's when McPake kind of rebuilds the squad and I think that'll be the dual test of his uh, managing ability. Yeah. I, I mean, a player that's really impressed me has been Joe Chalmers. Like, his, his like, stats are off. You know, I, I think uh, Stuart Ross, who does kind of breakdowns of players, I saw he put up a chart of what Joe Chalmers has done in League One and, like, his his stats are off the charts. and he's He's been really impressive for you this season. Yeah, he's usually made to be at the scapegoat. And, um, I don't really know why. Maybe it's maybe the Celtic background. Maybe people think that you come from one of the old farm teams that you're instantly, you've got to be a player, you've got to be a kind of star man. Uh, he missed the penalty against Alwa that knocked us out of the League Cup eventually. So he, he does get coming for his critics, but I've, I've never really seen that, like, a necessarily a terrible performance for him. I think he's very comfortable on the ball. He likes to progress it. Um, I just think that maybe the defensive end is not quite what you want from him. But again, he's not quite in the team for that. That's what Chris Hamilton's there to do. That's what Paul Allen's there to do. Mop up behind him, make the tackles. He's more of the start of the attacks, let it flow through him. But I think he's a, I think he's a very fine footballer and he's a player playing the, definitely in the championship once again. But I think the real standouts in our team just now are Josh Edwards, our left wing back. Um, he's been touted for a move down to England for a couple of years now. He's never quite got to that stage yet. And I think Matthew Todd... Um, come through up through the academy uh, just very industrious he scored them um, basically from the halfway line against Clyde a few weeks back and um, he's adding that kind of his arsenal not like he's going to score from the halfway line every week of course but those goals that, that kind of drive to go forward and get into the box I think McPake's kind of bringing out the best of them now I think he was very impressed from early on in his career and I think that's why he's I think he's been one of the mainstays in the team as well Yeah well but, I mean Kel Benedict is always a, you know he always looks like a, you know he's has he made a big difference, do you think, just in terms of leadership on the pitch, the defensive capabilities of Dunfermline? Yeah, I think um, the fact he's come in immediately and took over the captaincy from Kyle Benedict, uh, sorry, not Kyle Benedict, because he is the captain, of course, took over the captaincy from Graham Dorans, spoke volumes to him, and the fact that McPake knew him from his Dundee days, obviously, can rely on him immediately. That's kind of intermediary between him and the dressing room. And I think he has just calmed everything down. Obviously, he's got experience from being around the lower leagues, and I think that he's aided the likes of Luis Breen, who was kind of in and out of the team last season, his defensive centre-back partner now. Now Sam Fisher's coming to the team in the back three. Um, he seems very assured immediately. And I think the fact that now Benedict is surrounded by guys, he just needs to be that kind of guy in the middle, making the tackles, making the headers, not being exposed as he was in the Falkirk game towards the end when he made that tackle and probably should have got a second booking for it as well. I don't think you'll see too many of him being put in that situation at the weekend but I think he just comes across as a very assured mild-mannered guy but very direct in what he wants and the fact he took the penalty as well when he in the Falker game shows you that he's ready to step up at any occasion and kind of put himself forward in the big high-pressure situations. I was actually quite surprised when he stepped up to take the penalty 
uh, Michael, because I didn't realise he was a, a penalty taker, to be honest. that was uh, No, no, it was the same with us because um, Lewis McCann, I think he was off the field at the time, but he took Dunfermline's last penalty. You would have thought Todd would have liked a shot at as well. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. more technical players like Chris Mockley or Mike Joe Jammers would have stepped up again, tried to right the wrongs. But yeah. I think when we, it was strange when he kind of took up, but he, he seemed very assured of that. That was what he was going to do. He was the guy that was going to take it. There were no questions about it. So, I thought it was very interesting. I, I just like, I just like the presence that he has in the team as well. And I think it's very hard when you're a guy that comes from a rival team, uh, like he did from Rafe Rovers immediately, and yeah. try to slot into one of the rivals' teams. You're going to get a bit of stick immediately from the fans, but all that's in the past now. We almost see it like a kind of bed on the cap that he has come to the Dumbrella. Yeah. And he has kind of spurred the likes of maybe McGlynn, who he could have went to fuck up with, or he could have stayed at Rafe Rovers with Ian Murray. So I think... We're very happy in that aspect of it that he has decided to join them Dunfermline and given him a two-year contract. So I signed the faith, obviously, Mike Peck, who, as I've said before, knows him from his time at Dundee. Yeah, there was a bit of chat that he was going to come to Falkirk, but then um, uh, I don't know where, where it all fell down, but that's we then signed Cole Donaldson. So, yeah. I don't know, can I? Because we, I think, well, although, although Donaldson did go down with us under, I mean, your secret agent, John Hughes, of course, <laughs> um, I think I think um, we would have, we would have liked him back. I thought he was he was a, he was another Benedictus kind of presence. He was very assured, didn't put a foot wrong, chipped him with a few goals, and effectively Benedictus is just coming with a bit more experience in Dawson and slid right into the team. Mm. And he doesn't have to be paired with F. A. Ambrose now. Um, as much as he's had a match on the Friday for Morton, um, he was an absolute disaster for us. As seen by the fact he got sent off in the game that took us down. <laughs> I I mean another point. That it's amazed me is Todder off like six goals for you already. And like, I mean, there's a you could tell when he was at Falkirk, it was a player in there, but he seems to be your kind of main goal threat this this year, which surprises me. I think it's because obviously the ball's in from deep crosses, really suits this kind of game, of just get onto the, his head. And another thing they've done very effective at is the, is the crosses, but the guy arriving at the back post for the tap in, um, no team's really caught on to the fact that that seems to be Mick Pick's game plan there. So as much as he's he's doing it uh, effectively, he's been put into positions to be effective. And I think it is just the fact he's honed these games around being a target man, being that effective guy. But he's he's also got he's got a bit of a uh, not the flair about him, but he can pass the ball. He's not just like a big lump up top like maybe a Chris Templeton was back in the day. He's a, it's a guy that can play a bit of football and bring others into play as well as score the odd goal. Yeah, well, I tell you what, we've got John McGlynn on the podcast this week, uh, Michael. So we will be informing him of uh, Mick Pake's little tactic there. <laughs> um, if, he's not, if he's not caught on to the fact already, then um, I'm sure he will. Sure he will. I'll be over it. He'll be over it. Uh, right, listen, Michael. What do you think the score's going to be on Saturday? Then I'll take any sort of draw just to keep the gap between us. Of course, I'd love a win, but I think. One one will suffice. I mean, the, the thing is, it's a you know, if Dunfermline wins, that's seven points. And at this stage in the season, even at this stage of the season, you're going seven points a long way back. You know, especially the way you guys have been going this season, because uh, it just it just seems to have that like just chug out the wins, chug out the wins, and grinding them out. Um, but yeah, it, if you we're obviously wanting to win, aren't we, Ross? I think we, we I think we need the win. We need um, that. We we, we, I, I, we need a win. We need to, we need to win. I, I think it's for us. It's it's one or bust uh, yeah. on Saturday. But I, I reckon it should be. You know, judging on the first, I thought the first game was great. Really entertaining game of football, and it looks like we have sold out. We've certainly sold out the south stand. Um, I think we're about one thousand five hundred away from the main stand selling out, or uh, maybe yeah, less, less than that. Less than five, less than fifteen hundred tickets was the update the club put out earlier on. So I think we could be heading for a. And if I, I think Dunfermline will sell out the away end come Saturday and um so you could maybe have seven, seven and a half thousand in the ground, which would be amazing. Yeah, looking forward to it. Michael, um I've well, no, I say it, I try I try to stop myself say it best of luck for Saturday because I'm really this week I'm not meaning it at all. <laughs> um but I said um all the best, mate. Thank you very much for coming on Falker Daft. Uh, it's Michael from That's Number Ten Years podcast. Thanks for coming on. No problem at all. This is Falkirk Daft. 
that's just about it from Falkirk Daft. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much to our guest pundit, David McAnally, my brother. And thanks very much to Michael from That's Ever 10 Yards podcast for coming on. But, Ross, we teased it at the start of the show. The big draw for the FSS, the hospitality, the Red Bus Bistro. Um, what else? The Simon Steno tickets. And most importantly, that bucket of beers from Falkirk Daft. This is what's up, Ross. So let's let's start at the bottom, right? So we've got Ross in front of him. It's got every single member of the FSS, and each member has been allocated a number. Now, I here have got a number generator, which I'm going to share on the screen. Let's get it shared, John. Yeah. So just while you're sharing that, then, John, I'll... Uh... I'll just give a bit of a recap then. So as as John mentioned, we are absolutely delighted to be able to help the Supporter Society with their monthly draw for October. Two monthly prizes have been backed up by two guest prizes this month, so there's going to be four winners in total uh, tonight. If the same number is drawn more than once, I don't know if the random generator would allow that, but we will redraw if we get the same number twice. Um, so there's 590 uh, members included in the draw. I have and typed the, it into here. I'm, I'm like, I feel like a bit like the glamorous assistant here, Ross. Well, I'm the glamorous this. assistant tonight. I like this. And, uh, and just as John mentioned, the recap, so the, the first prize of boardroom hospitality for two at a future home game, courtesy of Falkirk Football Club, a beer bucket full of beer bottles or cans in the Brockwell Bar at a future home game, courtesy of ourselves. Afternoon tea for two on a vintage Rootmaster, courtesy of the Red Bus Bistro, and that's valid for 12 months. And last but not least, two tickets for the almost sold out night with Simon Stainrod this Saturday, the 5th of November, at the Inshira Hotel, and that's courtesy of a Falkirk Supporter Society member. So thank you to them for that as well. Um, so the winners, and we're just going to draw these in out, they will be contacted by email directly from the Supporter Society following the release of tonight's podcast. So I like all these terms and conditions, Ross. It's it's like, I like terms that. and conditions, Eric. I like so that. I like that. And what we'll do is we'll start with the two tickets for the almost sold out night. Oh, with right, here we go. Who's going to be first out? We're generating the number. It's 529, Ross. It's 529. Okay, so let's have a look here. 529 is a Mr. Harris Mackay. Well done, Harris. Well done, Harris. There you go. 529 off the back. So he is getting the Simon Stainrod tickets. Well, I draw the next number, Ross. It's very yes. exciting. Uh, yes, it, let's do I it. I don't and know why, cool. but if you are watching the video version, for some reason it says meet girls from Ukraine. It's popping up on the right hand side of the screen. This is not my <laughs> computer. Honestly, this is not my computer. Okay, oh, the yeah. next number this is for the Red Bus Bistro, Ross. It is afternoon tea for two. Right, here we go. And the number 530. This is a random number generator. It's come out as 530. Okay. So 530 is a Mr. Craig Ross. There we well go. Well done, Craig. Winner of the afternoon tea for two. That's the best prize coming out next, isn't it? Yes, indeed. The bucket of beers from Falkirk Daft. Here we go. Falkirk Daft bucket of beers. Let's and are you, are you selling this all out in the, the, the bar on Saturday, Ross? Yeah. You could well, go it's whatever game the winner will choose, John. So it might not right. be this Saturday, but they can pick whatever game. Right, will, okay. And there we go. Uh, it's all yes, come out of Ross's pocket. The, uh, you know, and he's because he's chosen this big bucket and the budget doesn't stretch that far. Right, here is the number coming out right now 154. Okay, so let's have a look here. 154 is a Catherine King. Well, well done, done Catherine. Catherine. Yes, well done, Catherine. Massive well done. And last but not least, it's our boardroom hospitality for two. Ooh, uh, this is the biggie. This is the biggie. Here we go. Right, generating the number now. It is two four three. Two four three is a Kirk Cuffle. Well done, Kirk. You've Way. got the boardroom well hospitality. Done. Really they, well done. That's all. I, that, I feel like a proper game show. I quite like that. Yeah, I quite like that. And we're going to be able to do this at the end of every month. So that's right, there you go. So if you want to get involved and be part of the draw, sign up now to the FSS. Get us up over 600 members, everything going back into the club. I think the last they were saying was it 6,900 quid going into the club each uh, month now. Well, that was yesterday. So I think with the, there's there's another 10 or 12 people, uh, 13 people, I think, uh, rejoin, uh, sorry, joined up today. So that's probably well over £7,000 uh, a month now, which is amazing. Fantastic. Well, there you go. Right. I can't, I, I don't want to stop because I'm so buzzing about this game now. Right. Um, but, 
I d- yeah. Ross, I mean, like, we've joked on top of the advent calendar, but it is that derby feeling, isn't it? You get that buzz yeah. on the run up to the game. And everybody's feeling it that the tickets are, as you as you just mentioned, the tickets are going really, really well. Uh, less than 1,500, they're all left for the main stand. It's probably going to be at the sort of, uh, the towards the away end, I would imagine that's probably where the bulk of those seats are for for uh, available. So no, it's, it's everybody's buzzing for it. We've got the Stain Rod night on on Saturday night as well, which personally I'm really looking forward to as well. So let's just hope we go there with a, a big win, three points. I know um, we got uh, Michael mentioned a draw there. I, I wouldn't be happy with a draw on Saturday. I, I think we. I know. Need- um, yeah, it's I, one or bust. Yeah, I was I, well. It's not bust, but it's I not bust. But the way everything's really going, you want to win. Um, I was really bold with my prediction last week, so I'm going to go with. Uh, I'm going to go bold again. I'm going to go Super Saturday four 0 Falkirk. Super Saturday four 0 Falkirk. I love it. Come on. Come I'm going to be a little less than that. I'm going to go two. <laughs> I'll go two one Falkirk and just like Don't absolutely <laughs> shiting myself for the last twenty minutes. I believe that's what might happen. Um, but listen, eh, all for it. And of course. Uh, this isn't no way Pod Falkirk Daft podcast this week. There's going to be a second Falkirk Daft podcast. Look f- out for it on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, whatever you get your podcast. We're going to be speaking to the management team, John McGlynn, Paul Smith, and look out for our social channels as well. We want your quick fire questions for them. So just to kind of, we want to make it as lighthearted as possible because they let Lewis do all the serious stuff on Falkirk TV. We just want a lighthearted uh, interview with John. Find out you know all about the man himself so yeah look at our social channels and please put your questions forward to john and paul that would be great and um, members subscribe on youtube like and share like and share and um, if you want to sign up to our discord it is in the links below and uh, you can get involved in all the chat there we're also looking for sponsors thanks very much to our buckle we thanks we've got a special sponsor uh, coming on this week for the john mcguin episode as well but if you want any sponsors we'd love to for you to get in touch folk at that pod at gmail.com or drop us a dm on the socials right we're off to prepare uh, questions for john mcguin and paul smith now but hopefully when we speak to you next on this podcast, it's going to be a Falkirk one. Come on, the Burns! Come on, man. But we can't go without saying the usual catchphrase. Expect the unexpected, John. As always, buddy, let's do this. <laughs>